Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, so I will go to the stage first, and um, it will be more easy for me to see everyone. Um, so I would like first to start uh, by telling you something about myself, and then we will uh, talk about um, my topic, about inequalities in health. Uh, so I'm, I'm a Palestinian Arab from Israel, um, and um, I'm a researcher at Ben Gurion University of the Negev. Uh, I study inequalities in health. This is my major topic. Uh, my focus is on uh, groups um, who are minorities in society, uh, being uh, ethnic minorities or immigrants. You know, we know a lot about immigration now in the world. And also, I'm studying indigenous populations. Uh, I did my studies, the first and second and third degree, in uh, the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, which is one of the best universities in the world. And then I moved to do one postdoc in Ben Gurion University, where I'm teaching now. And one postdoc I did also in Canada, University of Toronto. And I did some research also in Toronto, in Canada. Uh, in addition, I did also research in the UK while doing my visiting uh, periods. And also, I did a visiting faculty in Chicago, the US. I heard some of you were, are from the US, right? Some, no? No one? OK, so you are from other countries, OK. Uh, so, um, what I'm planning to do is, uh, I'll try actually to cover these themes in my talk. First, uh, introduce the issue of health inequality, and then uh, talk about why it is important for the context of your uh, projects and uh, uh, your um, studies in this uh, summer uh, uh, camp. And then um, talk about how inequalities are produced, why they exist, what are the root causes for these inequalities. And then I'd like to talk about uh, the policies that can help to tackle these inequalities. Maybe you get some ideas also for your projects about uh, how to reduce these inequalities. And last, I would like to finish about one of my studies that we did in Israel, about the ethnic inequalities in Israel between Arabs and Jewish. Okay, so before we talk about what is health inequality, I'd like first to introduce you to uh, the health, what, what we mean about health. Health, in, according to the WHO, which is the World Health Organization, means a state or a complete state of physical and mental and social well-being. So it is not just the absence of disease, right? It's not the opposite of disease. So it's more inclusive meaning, which relates to the social, to the uh, mental, to the physical aspects of life. So it's not just about disease. And so therefore, it's very important for us to look at the health of the population uh, in addition to the other um, aspects of uh, the population, like the economic and the, uh, and the other. Um, what we see about health um, starting from the mid-century, uh, uh, the 20th century, is that there is a shift in the burden of diseases. And this shift um, uh, caused, actually, higher quality of life. People live a uh, better life. Do you agree about this? Starting from the middle of the 20th century, you know why this happened? Why people have higher quality in life? What was this related to? Economic development, yes. Yes, what happened in the Second World War? Yes, and also, yes, is. Okay, I thought you were <laughs> um, Yeah, I think also it's about, yes, please. Okay, and how does this relate to better quality of life? 
Yes, more development in the medical um, industry, but also there was also the industrial revolution before, right? That helped, you know, to change the trends in the economy of, of the people. So the industrial revolution led to that we have more investment in, and more developments in different uh, technical things in the world, including medical technologies, and we see that the quality of life also of people improved. Also out of not just the medical technologies, technologies, but all technologies, right? So the quality of life of people has improved. And also, this was accompanied with improvement in life expectancy. So people live longer now. Because li people live longer, so we see now more chronic diseases, okay? Some diseases that were not, uh, we didn't see it before, we see it now, like uh, cancer, diabetes and heart diseases. These diseases were not exist before. Now they exist more and more because people live longer. And what diseases you know that were before that? Do you know about it? What diseases were before this period? Yes, it's communicable diseases. Yes, yes. Commu more communicable diseases. So there was a shift in the diseases worldwide, from communicable diseases to more chronic diseases, okay? However, what we see that the burden of diseases is not distributed evenly in societies, okay? We see that it is different in different societies. We see inequalities in health globally, inside countries and within countries and between countries, okay? So we see these inequalities by gender, by age, by socioeconomic position, by geography, and ethnic groups. For example, if you looked here at this map, sorry, you can see that um, life expectancy of 70 and more, 72 and more, is in, in here, in these countries with the gray, uh, color, you see, in the in the, um, the U.S. and the, uh, Canada and uh, also in Europe and some of the Gulf countries, but uh, in other countries like China and Russia, we see life expectancy less than that. It's around uh, 60, 66 uh, years old. So we see that there are inequalities in life expectancy for different populations in the world. If you look here, uh, this is Africa. Africa and some countries, they live for um, um, about 40 years, life expectancy. So there's a huge difference between uh, the countries. So you see, uh, this um, is Iceland and Japan and Switzerland and Australia. They live around 80 years while in China, Russia, Brazil, India, it's around 60, 66, as I showed, showed you before. And um, here, I see that it is not uh, shown here, but this is Africa. They have lower life expectancy. Something happened with the layout of this uh, slide. Um, in addition to that, what we notice in uh, research uh, that Within countries also, we see differences in life expectancy and in mortality. Mortality is the, um, the number of people or the rate of people who die. So we see that these differences, there are differences according to the level of richness of these people. Again, excuse me for this, I don't know what happened with the layout of the presentation, but uh, this is the poorest in each of the countries and you see that this is uh, the green one. It is the poorest people, so they die more. And this is consistent for all the countries that you see here, okay? For Uganda, India, uh, and other countries, okay? So we see that different levels of income uh, are associated with different level of mortality or also with diseases and health. Uh, so, what we mean about health inequality when we see this? So, 
The term health inequality means that there are differences in health, that these differences shouldn't, shouldn't be, right? Because if we look at each country, and they have a healthcare system, so the health of the people should be the same. But we see that there are these differences. And these differences actually persist, you know, in these countries, and they should not be really there. So they can be, uh, they are unnecessary, they are av avoidable, and they can also be considered unfair. Because why should someone at birth live less years? Why a person in Africa can live only 40 years, and someone in Japan, for example, can live for 80 years? It's a huge difference, 40 years. So it depends where you are born. If you are born in Russia, your life expectancy is 66. If you are born in Israel, your life expectancy would be around 80. So there is no inequality in the world about life expectancy and about health. And these inequalities are not just and not fair. Uh, something in addition to that, we see in uh, one of the slides that these health inequalities are related to the socioeconomic position of the person. It depends on where you are located in the social hierarchy in, in, uh, in your uh, country. And what we see also, that these inequalities are systematic. It's not about one individual, not just about me or you or someone else, it's about many people in their, uh, in their country and what position they occupy in that, uh, in that uh, country. So my question to you, so why inequalities are important? Why these health inequalities are important? Why I'm introducing this to you? Yes, please. Okay, at the same right for health and life, and life, okay. Do you agree with her? Do you think that everyone has to have the same level of health? Well, it depends on what? <clears throat> mm -hmm. One, two, three, one, two, three. Someone uh, yes. that have a the best education mm -hmm. will have a, a good uh, health system. It's, uh, I think, obvious. Mm -hmm. Yes, but should we worry about the inequalities in health? Please. Yes. Yes. Of nature, you know, it's not like uh, is any countries uh, like more de developed than other, you know? Yes, yes. It doesn't that. relate, you say, yeah, yeah, it doesn't, yeah. should not be related to the development of, of the country. Yeah, Everyone yeah. has to enjoy the same level of health and has the right, you said it's a human right, we have to enjoy the same right. Yes, please. Okay, okay, please continue this. What do you mean by treasure in our life? What do you mean by treasure? Uh, so, I mean that uh, if our parents were healthy and we were born healthy, yes. uh, we must uh, just continue in this uh, way and uh, we can't lose it. And I think that our government must support us. So, what healthy societies does? If people are less sick, what they can do? Yeah, yes, of course. They can study better, they can get higher uh, education, right? And their income can be improved. So this is an important question also for the economy of societies, right? So first, yes, I agree with you. Health is a human right. It's a, in the Universal Declaration of the Human Rights, we find this sentence, his health is a fundamental human right. And everyone, according to the WHO, should enjoy the highest level, possible level of health. Yes, WHO is the World, the World Health Organization. And also, all social groups should attain a, and, a, the, a, the, and enjoy the highest level of health that is enjoyed by the most privileged in society. So, this should not be, there should not be inequalities in health 
uh, between different uh, groups. According to the World Health, Health Organization, also people should have the right to access to healthcare services in their countries, equal access to healthcare services. But what we see that about one million people globally here, they actually are pushed to poverty because their health is not good. They have to pay money for achieving um, health care services and this can lead them also to poverty because health care costs money in some countries, okay? So they can become poor because they pay money for their health. Also, they um, can also uh, be, when they are sick, they also can't work, they can't be productive. So they can be also a burden on their uh, governments. So actually many governments now try to reduce the health inequalities because they know that when there are more people who are sick in their countries, this means the government and the country has to pay money for uh, these people who are sick. Lots of money goes to treatment of people and we have economic evaluation of this. So in addition to that, sick people are less productive. So this means that they are unemployed, they have to be relying on their government. So they, can, they should get some stipend, some money for their living because they are not able to work, right? And this is also additional burden. Also, this can create the stability of countries. Why? Because when you have larger inequalities, people are not happy. When they are not happy, so they feel they, they have, you know, they, they are not belonging. No one takes care of them. So their social cohesion will be lower. So inequalities is very important for the stability. The quality is important for the stability of countries. Okay? And what happened in 2008 that the World Health Organization, because of these inequalities worldwide, they established a committee that is called the Commission of the Social Determinants of Health. And this committee, this commission, uh, was led by this person who is called Michael Marmot, and he is from England. He studied, he's a professor uh, that is in the UCL, University College of London, and he studies health inequality. And he gathered 20 specialists from uh, the world in economy, in sociology, in health, and they came from different regions in the world to study the issue of health inequality, and they all wrote a report about how to close the gap in health in different countries. How countries can, how governments can try to reduce this health gap. And they said that, very important, that the uh, social injustice is the uh, number one killing people uh, in the world. So the social injustice is behind, you know, the living conditions of people are behind these health inequalities. They actually cause the bad health. It's not about germs or uh, biological uh, factors or communicable diseases that used to be before, but now it's about the social determinants of health. They actually in this committee said that about men, one mil billion of the people live in slum areas and this actually caused them uh, to be, um, their living condition caused them uh, lots of, uh, of uh, disease and uh, poor health. And the WHO also talked about this, this model, that the health of the people is actually affected by not just, just these factors, by the biological factors of sex and heterodigity, and this is the biology and the uh, genetic factors. But it is affected also by the general socioeconomic and cultural environment, this arrow. But this arrow affects the living and working conditions of people, 
and the working and living conditions affect the social and community networks, and this also can affect the individual lifestyle of the person. Okay? So if we take, for example, smoking, the laws about smoking are in the larger arrow, and this determines where you can find smoking in your living and working areas, and this can affect, you know, uh, your lifestyle, where you can smoke, and this can affect your health. Please. You have a question. Hmm? Good day, ma'am. My name is Diaz, and yes. I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, health is inherently in unequal according to our DNA. Mm -hmm. Why should we fix the nature co uh, course of life? Mm -hmm. So my answer to you is, um, is coming when we talk about how, um, what are the root cases of the health inequality. If it's the genetic or other factors, or it's the environment, okay? Just a minute, I will, you will get an answer. If you didn't get an answer, then you remind me about it. So the WHO is talking about a equal opportunity in life and that people sh uh, who occupy different positions can have a different, um, a li a, a different health uh, status and, uh, um, and this is also um, Lalonde who actually talked about this model of the WHO that health is affected by all these factors by genetic, by gender, age, by working and living environment by the social environment, the family and the friends who we have, and about our lifestyle, about our food, about our physical activity, how much time we sleep, if we smoke or don't smoke, and also about the healthcare system, if it's available and accessible to us or not. So, what is the last research tells us about all health inequality? So, uh, first of thing, uh, first I have to say that the research actually can focus on one of these three in, in health inequality. It can focus on the right to health by law. If the people in their country have a law for inequality in health, and this is about also the organization of healthcare services. You know, in the US, for example, there is no um, um, the public healthcare services like it is in other countries in Europe. Uh, and there is no law about uh, health care services. You know, the Obamacare tried to give some basic health care services for the people, but it's not equal to other uh, countries like in, in the UK and other countries. So first question, is there a right to health according to the law? The other thing is about the provision of health care services and access to health care services. Are the people having the same access to the health care services? And uh, the third question, are there uh, differences in the health outcome of the population? These three actually can be related to each other, but what we see is that the research can focus on one of these three. So, what is the last research uh, findings in this topic? Regarding the health outcomes, what we see that there is a gradient in health in all the countries that we study and researchers from different countries study, they see this gradient. What is the, the gradient? Is the steps that you see here. The higher social position you get, the better health you have. So this is about coronary heart diseases. So what you see here is people who are administrative, they have lower heart diseases. But people who have lower position in their work, they have higher heart diseases. And the same here, oh, this get really uh, disrupted. People who also, at the different um, age groups, the same. If they have higher uh, uh, position in their work, they have better health. Lower position in their health, in their work, they have lower uh, health, or poorer health. The same if we compare men and women life expectancy, Women who have higher income, they have higher life expectancy. The same for men. Women who have lower income, they have less life expectancy. So people who 
have lower position, they live also less years. Now, it's a, the question is, is this a matter of only poor countries, or this happens also in rich countries? So the answer can be found in the next slide. What you see here is that um, in Chile, again, this, um, this uh, slide has been disrupted. In Chile, people live 80 years, and in the US, they live uh, 79 years. Chile uh, has much lower gross domestic product than, a, than the US. This is Chile, and this is, uh, this is the US. Three times higher gross domestic uh, uh, product. So how it can be that in a country that they have lower economic development, but they have better or the same life expectancy. What do you think? Why people in Chile live the same uh, as in expectancy, the same as in the US? Yes, please. Because Chile is agricultural. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, Chile is more an agricultural country and uh, the environment of the Chile is not damaged. Mm -hmm. But in the US we have so many factories, so many companies, uh, there is air pollution, noise pollution, water pollution, and mm -hmm. that's why in Chile I think uh, people live uh, longer. That okay, thank you. This is possible explanation. Yes, please. Okay, yeah, <laughs> great, <laughs> tell my us. Name, my name is Anardita, and I'm yes. from Chile. Yes. Well, I also spent one year in the U.S. Yes. When I was younger. Yes. And I would say that, for example, U.S., they all have cars. We walk a lot. Okay. Like during the city center or when I have to go to school or whatever. Mm -hmm. In the United States, everyone drives, so sedentary mm -hmm. life is really bad. Over yes. There. Okay. And about food, I gained like 10 kilos over there. Wow. Food in yes. the United States is really greasy and they mm -hmm. put seasonings in everything and all that. Mm -hmm. And what she said about industries, Chile mm -hmm. is it's quite different yes. because industries are really away from the city. Mm -hmm. And well, Santiago is really polluted, but the rest of the cities are not. And I think people in general has a healthier lifestyle. Than in other Chile. Countries. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. You had also something to add. OK. Yes. Other explanation? Please. Um, I believe that, uh, but uh, U.S. has probably enormous defense budget, not the Chile. Uh, they have just um, changed the flow of money into another sphere. Okay. This is the question. This is the main point. Yes. But uh, this is not uh, like the only one problem mm -hmm. and cause. I believe. Yes. So you say, yes, maybe they have a higher uh, GDP, Other but priorities they be. actually uh, give, put the money in different uh, aspects of life, different areas, but not uh, about health. Okay, this is a legitimate. Another idea is about this. What you said is very important, I think, and it can explain uh, what I am uh, going to show you, because what we see, you know, also, these differences exist here between Chile and Russia. You see that Russia in uh, this uh, 2013, 2014, they have also differences in life expectancy. And still, the two countries have a close uh, a economy. But life expectancy still in Chile is, is uh, better. What explanation you have for this, Russia and Chile? Any ideas? Um, yeah. Well, basically, sometimes it has to do with the 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 wealth gap between the rich and the poor. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just to give an example with Chile okay. and yes. the United States, where I didn't have the opportunity, but I, I could still give an example here. Yes. But I know more statistics with the U U.S. So allow yes. me to use the. In the United States, there is a four percent of the four percent of the people in the United States are very rich. 
Okay? Mm -hmm. yes. And that, those 4% are richer than every, the whole 96% left. Okay. Yeah? So that, the, the inequality gap is extremely very high in the United yes. States. So that has, uh, in, in very developed countries, the inequality gap actually plays a role. Exactly. I think this is very, uh, very important point. If we look at the inequalities in income in the world, the highest inequalities in the world are for, you know, in the U.S., right? This is what we know, because the richest people in the world live in the U.S., and other people also live in the U.S. who are not rich. So what happens in the U.S., what we see that the income inequality in the U.S. is among the highest in the world. This is the income inequality. This is low and this is high. So what we see that when the income inequality is higher for the U.S., for example, and Portugal, what happens with the life expectancy? It is reduced. Because you have just a small portion of the people who have higher income and their life expectancy would be high, but many other people, their life expectancy is low. If you do an average for the life expectancy in the, world, in the country, so you will see that all the average will be going down. Okay? That's why we see here for the U.S. and Portugal, we see higher income inequality is associated with lower life expectancy. This is the life expectancy, it goes down. But if you look at Japan, Japan, they have very small income inequality. The same for Sweden, the Nordic countries, Norway, Belgium, Finland. These countries have small income inequality, and therefore what we see that their life expectancy is higher. Now in these countries, including Israel, Canada, Italy, and other countries, they have middle income inequality. The gaps are not very high. So we see that the life expectancy in these countries is in the middle. Okay, this is for the OECD countries. Now who did this research? Where Wilkinson and Bickett, I see that you don't see this. And they published this in a book that called The Spirit Level. Spirit Level, and they actually did the same exercise for many, many health indicators. If you look here about infant in, uh, mortality, the same. We have here the income inequality. When it is increasing, yes, this is the low and this is the high. When the income inequality increase, the infant mortality becomes very high. This is the line of the infant mortality. So the US, Portugal uh, have the highest infant mortality and uh, these countries, the Japan, Finland, Sweden, and Norway, they have lower infant inequality, uh, mortality. So, for countries, actually, according to this model, it's better to have lower income gap, right? Because if they have higher income inequality, very big inequality between the lowest salary, the lowest income, and the highest income, then the health will be poorer for the population. Okay? Is this clear for everyone? Okay, thank you, thank you for your uh, comment. It's very important. And this is the book about the spirit level of Wilkinson and Bickett, who are health economists, that they talked about their model of the relative income. And they came to conclusion that it's not about how much money a person makes in his country, but it is about what he can buy with that money in his country. A person can earn 1,000 euro in Russia, in Israel, in the UK, okay? And in Africa. What he can do with this money is very different. That's why it's not about how much money you get, it's about the gap. What is the difference between you and the others in a scale in your country? That's what determines what you can do with this money. And this theory actually is about, you know, a, about the a material a income and a relative income. So, um, the other thing that we, when, to prove this, the other thing that we can look, in the United States they spend as much as three times higher uh, money than the UK 
for the um, health um, um, healthcare services for each person in the U in the U.S. for a year. Yes, and but what we see if we if we compare the U.S. and England, we see that for heart diseases and for diabetes and for cancer, the U.K. is doing much better because they have lower rates of heart diseases, lower rates of diabetes and lower rates of cancer. So this means that it is not about how much money you spend on the healthcare services, but it is about, yes, if there is also a different organization of the healthcare services. In the US, they have a national health insurance law in the, in the UK, but in the US they don't have. So this is another important point. Now, I'm moving to talk about ethnic inequalities. And, you know, I started by saying that I'm studying ethnic inequalities in health among minorities. So the big question is, is health inequalities or the poor health is concentrated in ethnic minorities? So it's a question just for them or also for others. Because I showed this gradient that can be for every one of us in this room, right? We can have some income and our health will be related to that income. But when we look at ethnic minorities worldwide, what we see a consistent picture. We see that Ethnic minorities have poorer health in different countries. And it doesn't matter what country we look. It can be between black and white in the US, between the indigenous and non-indigenous uh, population in Canada, Australia, or, other, or Israel or other countries, and between immigrant and non-immigrant populations in different countries. So ethnic populations have poorer health. And my question to you is, why is that? Why ethnic minority? Because what I showed so far is that uh, it depends on the socioeconomic position of society, okay? But why ethnic minorities also have poorer health? They have... I can't hear you, sorry. Uh, maybe it's uh, because they um, have less rights than less majority. Less health rights, yes. So the organization of their, um, their uh, uh, law is different. So by law they don't have the right to health or access to health care services by law. Okay, do you agree with this? Yes, please. Uh, I agree with this, and mm -hmm. since I'm from Serbia, I will talk on my example. Yes. Uh, in my country, uh, the minority uh, has like uh, a right for insurance, but uh, they are not treated as uh, the others. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a problem in the system, and the doctors don't treat that people like the others. So this is about the quality of healthcare services yeah. to the minority. But yeah. why is that? Why they are not getting the same treatment? Because they are maybe they are less than our than okay. we are. I cannot I cannot mm -hmm. explain discrimination. Yeah, only. discrimination. Okay, I see. Other ideas, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, I too will give an indigenous mm -hmm. yes e example. An example with Nigeria is um, we have different we have different ethnicities in Nigeria, and then they're very major. Just that in some parts of Nigeria, we have some, like my part from the north, there is the places where you have minorities, okay? There are state rules, there are state um, conditions for, let me say, national health insurance schemes. Yes. Yeah, and those schemes come with privileges for indigenous citizens of those, of those states. Now, if the people that are the majority of that state, they have an advantage because they have a more affordable price at which they could register for the services and then the, serv um, the people that are minority have less and thus there, there is um, the, the distance between them and the hospitals are, f are, are, are larger so they can't really afford the, 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 what do call it? the allocation, yes. the, the budget allocation to these places doesn't support yes. adequate um, I see. So it's yeah. about also access and quality. Access and, yeah, yeah, access and quality. Other ideas? 
why ethnic minority groups can have poorer health? Well, I, I am from Serbia too. Mm -hmm. And in Serbia, like uh, by the law, we are all equal, but I think it's a little bit of a political question, you know. Okay. Like mm -hmm. from the doctor's side, are they yes. going to treat the minor minority and majority in the same way? Mm -hmm. So, So yeah, so they have to treat the same way, but they are not? Yes, I see. Yes, please. I think so ethnic min minorities usually live in those places where there is bad infrastructure. Maybe yes. medical services are not achievable at all. Mm -hmm. They cannot reach it because it's far away or something. Or if there is a hospital, mm -hmm. uh, the conditions of that hospital is really, really bad compared to which is uh, provided for the majority. Yes, thank you. So many of you actually talk about the access and other idea? Uh, I think that uh, some ethnic minorities uses uh, some kind of non-traditional medicine and uh, maybe this is, is a point why they, uh, they have a poor uh, health. Mm -hmm. So it's about the culture, you mean, of these people. Maybe their culture uh, makes me, them use more of this um, traditional medicine, and then because of yes, that, some some uh, cultures have mm -hmm. have stronger traditions about uh, non mm -hmm. non traditional medicine. Yes. But uh, as we know, is it's it's no good for health at all. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, what we see um, here, I see that again it was disrupted. Um, these are, you know, the death of heart diseases among black and white in the US. This is the black and this is the white. And you see, at all income levels, in all income levels, still the black have higher heart diseases compared to the white. The same thing we have for women. This was, that was for men, now for women again. And this is regardless of the income. So it's not a problem of the income really that the ethnic minorities have poorer health. There, are, there is something in addition that can make them their health poorer. And we see this consistent in many countries. This is um, a slide from the UK. We see that um, infant mortality here the, inf the, the infant death is much higher for the different groups compared to those who were, were born in the UK. And I can continue, you know, showing more and more examples. Also for Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal in uh, Australia, you can see that there is a difference of all, uh, about 20 years in uh, the life expectancy for these groups. Now, what research tells us about this? And, you know, many, many examples, so I don't want really to go um, uh, and uh, uh, detail uh, each of these uh, examples. But what research tells us about it, that there are different pathways, oops, it's running, that can explain the uh, health inequalities. The first assumptions about what explains these inequalities were something that we heard from you before that maybe it's about genetics or biological factors, maybe it's about culture, maybe it's about the lifestyle. But what we see now, that these are not the main reasons. The um, genetic um, the research showed that, for example, most of the genes of the black and white are identical, are similar. Only 10 or 15 percent are different. And these differences can't actually explain all the inequalities in health. It can. So it's not a genetic issue. So this one we solved. It's not genetic. So the health uh, of the population, the, the um, ethnic minorities, is not because of their bad genes. What people thought, you know, some research in the U.S. was about, you know, they have high blood pressure because they have bad genes. There was this research, and now we know that this is not true because, you know, some uh, uh, researchers did this research. 
they actually isolated different genes, they looked at the genes and looked and they find very similar genes in this population. Also, we found that culture is something that is changing. If you change the environment of the people, if you have the, them access to the healthcare services, close the, to them, and you explain about it and give information, this also can change. The cultural factors and the lifestyle factors can change. So what research found now, it's just more uh, about the explanations that I showed before. It's more about the socioeconomic status. We see that in many ethnic minorities, there is a concentration of poor people. They have lower education because of policies, not because they, they don't purchase higher education. They have lower education, lower income, lower employment opportunities. They have also, because they have lower socioeconomic position, they have more stress in life. And many times their coping skills are lower. So in this case, they have this tension, this stress, and stress can be a bad for health of the population. Also, you mentioned before the geography or where people are living. So we found that uh, this is important. Uh, many times, the ethnic minority groups, they concentrate in some areas. And these areas not necessarily get the same access and the same services as the majority groups. For political reasons sometimes, because ethnic minorities don't have enough political power to affect the politicians. And because of this, they have less services. And these services, they actually lead to uh, poor health. Discrimination is very important, and you mentioned that before. Not just discrimination in the healthcare services, but also for policymakers many times. At the higher level, they don't give the, the equal distribution of the services. And uh, this is the inequitable policies and services, as uh, we mentioned before. So the approach to study uh, health inequalities now are looking at the material uh, circumstances, what is the socioeconomic position of the people. They look at the ecological, social ecological factors, which uh, actually look at the historical, political, economic, and social and cultural factors together, and how does it affect the, the health of the population. It looks at the psychological uh, factors, psychosocial factors, related to stress, related to social cohesion, and it looks at the life course from infancy to death. So, your question, yes. and then I will complete this uh, idea. My, my question is small. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Is socioeconomical status is about income or something uh, another? Mm -hmm. So, socioeconomic status has a different uh, definitions. Uh, socioeconomic status is related to the income, but also to education and employment, the three things. And uh, because, you know, income tells you about what you can buy, I can't buy now, right? Education tells you about not just um, um, what work you can do as an adult, but what your parents did with you when you were a child how they invested in your education when you were a child and where, where, when you were a young adult. And it also tells about your access to information. If you have higher education, you have better access. And your work tells about your prestige. Because if you are a lawyer or a physician or an uh, educator or an economist, you have different position, prestige in society. All of this, this makes the social class. But there is also another thing that is important about social class is your uh, family, what you, the assets. What did you inherit from your family? What you get from them? The name, the lands, um, other properties, all of this gets into the socioeconomic position. If you want, you can call this a class also, which includes all of this together, okay? Uh, so uh, the research, actually now, and socioeconomic inequalities in health, can focus on one of these approaches to understand the health inequalities. And I, I want actually uh, to, um, to say that 
One type of research is related to these factors, studying how income, education, and employment can create the gradient that I showed you in health. These steps, you know, so many, many of the studies go back and do this, um, um, examine these um, um, uh, the different health indicators in relation to health, to education, to income, uh, and uh, these factors. But my question is, why these factors are important? Why education is important? Why income is important? What does this do to your health? Why these factors are important? The socioeconomic position or the material factors? Yes, please. When you earn a lot, you yes. can, for example, buy very good mm -hmm. food, for example. Uh, then you can uh, go to very good doctors, yes. drink a lot of, for example, uh, vitamins and minerals and mm -hmm. so on. Yes. You can, for example, go to fitness. Yes. Okay, thank you. So this is one explanation. What also material factors can do to your health? Oh, um, we have, um, okay, basically in Africa, educational factor affects us in as much as the economic factor. Louder? In as much as the economic factors do affect us. Uh -huh. Like, the, based on the geography that was mentioned earlier on, in Africa we are close, we are in a region where um, anophilus mosquitoes are concentrated. Mm -hmm. So when, when I'm talking about ma malaria, right? Malaria is something that could, you could get vaccinated for it. Most of the time we don't get, lack of education causes um, Africans not to know that you could get vaccinated for this thing and you could avoid them. They don't know that when you have um, insecticides, you could kill, you could get rid of mosquitoes. So when these things happen, they are not conscious, they, they, are, they are, what do you call it, ignorant of the fact that it's risky. Now, um, that's, that's with the point of education. Education teaches you that when you're bleeding, you should raise your head and yes. there's some things education teaches you in school. So this, the lack of this education get, makes them naive of the fact that uh, they could have first aid treatment at home by themselves before going to the doctor. Yes. Okay, and then the world factor is already obvious. Without money, you can't, mm -hmm. you can't yes. afford more So, thank you. So, a socioeconomic position actually on the material factors can help us to protect our health, to have better food, have a better access to healthcare services, to buy in a better environment, also better housing, right? To buy to us uh, a nice vacation, right? So all these things can protect our health and improve our health, and that's why the material factors and are important. The other uh, um, explanatory approach is the social ecological, and what is this uh, saying is that it's complex. It's not just about what is your socioeconomic position, is about how your socioeconomic position is created. What are the policies? What the government is doing to create this socioeconomic position? So this is the political context and the governance of your uh, of your country. It's about also the. Um, the macroeconomy of your country and how the resources are distribu distributed between groups and also it can relate to your culture. So all these factors can create a socioeconomic position. This can affect the material circumstances of persons, their social cohesion, their stress, the social factors and health behaviors and this can affect the health and the way health is and well-being is distributed. This is actually the complicated model of the WHO and it actually shows this complexity about the health. And here what you see is socioeconomic position, the class that I talked about, the power, the political power and the prestige and the discrimination, all of these factors can affect the exposure of persons to diseases and their vulnerability also. And this can determine actually the, he the health of these, uh, of these uh, persons. So the exposure and vulnerability to the diseases is depending on these factors. If you have higher socioeconomic status, better class, you have more political power in society, and you have higher prestige and less discrimination, your exposure to diseases will be less, and your vulnerability will be less, 
and you can, if the healthcare system is helping you, is a buffer effect, so this is important for your health, and then your health would be uh, better. So according to the WHO, the uh, healthcare services can only uh, contribute just a little to the health of the people. It's not about just the healthcare services, it's about the social determinants of health that I mentioned before. It's about the socioeconomic status, it's about the uh, political uh, position of the population, it's about the class, it's about the gender, if you are in the right gender or not the right gender. So these are called the social determinants of health. And this is what affects the health of the population. If I want you to take uh, one message from this lecture is the importance of these social factors to the health of the population. So this is the very important message that the WHO, World Health Organization, is telling us. Uh, the health behaviors of people, the smoking, uh, diet, all this, physical activity, it affects only, has an effect of 30 uh, to 40 percent and the healthcare services is the less. Now, I want to ask you where the money goes of the healthcare systems. The healthcare system put the money where? Here, right? The, the government put most of the money for health in the healthcare system. When they do actually planning for the different uh, uh, ministers, they don't really think about health, okay? So the Ministry of, Educa of Education do not really think about the health of the population when they do their plans for education. For majority groups, for minority groups, they don't think about health, but they should think about the implications of their policies on the health of the population. Ministry of Transport also, they have to think about how the transport actually affects the population of health and etc. etc. So it's a very important uh, approach. So the psychological approach, I talked about it before, I will just skip. And last is the life course approach, which is very important now and it is developing now. So according to this approach, people actually, health, people's health is affected not just by their adulthood or infancy or when they are adults, it is affected also by uh, their uh, mother's health when, they, when she was pregnant with them. Now we have research that shows that um, the health of the mother is affecting uh, the fetal health and this affects the infant and this affects the childhood and the adult life. We see that in many, many studies now and this is one of the ways that there is an explanation for the um, um, the health between different uh, uh, populations. So we see in this slide that people who have low socioeconomic position, uh, they have less uh, cumulative vocabulary than uh, people who are, are ha at the higher socioeconomic levels. People who have lower socioeconomic position, their children know less words at the age of 36, 36 months. And this actually can have effect on their mental health. I'm sorry, this was, this is disrupted again, the slide. But people who have less vocabulary, they have lower uh, number of words when they are small, they have less, um, they have actually more uh, psychological distress when they are children, and also uh, they are expected to more problems on mental health in their adult uh, life. So this is very important now, research that's going on. The cultural and behavioral is about, you know, how the behaviors of the different groups um, is affecting their health. And what we see here is, again, smoking is distributed differently by different socioeconomic status of the populations. I'm just keeping because the slides are not looking good. Uh, something happened uh, with this slide. So, big question now, can we reduce the health inequalities? Uh, what do you think about this question? Can we reduce these health inequalities? And what way we can do this? And you see, some of the research is showing now that it can be done. For example, in the UK, 
they wanted to reduce the, ga the gap in life expectancy uh, from uh, uh, for 10%, and they succeeded to do this already for men and women, not to 10%, but by 2.3 in five years. So there is a way to reduce these gaps. The question is how we can reduce it. What do you think? Yes, please. Some ideas. Uh, yeah, uh, what yes. I think about it, that uh, if we talk about social economic uh, yes. status of the people, the main problem is the uh, inequal uh, distribution of uh, GDP between the uh, this gap actually in yes. in rich between the rich and the poor, it's uh, it can be lowered with mm -hmm. uh, proper yes. proper changes in the uh, tax systems uh, the first time. Yes. Uh, if the rich uh, the if the rich people would be obliged to pay uh, higher taxes, and then that the money the budget gets would be equally distributed between, between the people in need, probably that can help to reach the better results and better health level. Uh, that's what okay, thank you. Uh, nice idea. What do you think about this? Yes, please. I agree totally, but mm -hmm. uh, speaking uh, about educational uh, state of view, I would say that maybe uh, we can uh, find a solution by preventing the diseases. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that uh, is that we actually agreed that uh, in uh, that pe uh, poor people are probably less educated mm -hmm. because they don't have a possibility to be more educated. So they don't know m maybe about some uh, sexual diseases and everything. And maybe by educating the whole population, we mm -hmm. could prevent diseases, and uh, somehow uh, that's the solution of this. Okay, thank you. Other ideas? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I would like to start with uh, the first my point. Uh, actually, I'm really sorry, but uh, I don't agree with uh, your point uh, in one idea where I don't believe that uh, people in uh, any government should uh, pay uh, different uh, taxes. I mean, uh, uh, it uh, isn't okay that uh, rich people uh, has uh, to pay more than poor people mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it. Uh, I don't believe in need because uh, I'm sure that uh, this is the uh, labor and uh, that in long term uh, we'll got uh, a good economy growth. Uh, I'm really sorry, it's uh, not for you, it's only my mm -hmm. point. Uh, so, uh, about uh, your question, what uh, we can yes. uh, do to uh, make uh, our health uh, system better and uh, uh, to increase uh, health uh, uh, system in general. So personally, I believe that um, uh, there is a main question as uh, we are uh, uh, scientists uh, and uh, people who understand the situation like uh, you and uh, like uh, now. Uh, we uh, students um, from uh, a lot of countries uh, mm -hmm. should explain the government, um, the main idea that uh, government uh, should uh, change, uh, for, uh, I mean national governments uh, should change their focus from uh, investing money uh, only to hospitals and to medical services, uh, to education, to school, and uh, uh, to and personally, I believe that um, the main idea of government uh, is to uh, pr and to offer uh, equal um, uh, opportunities to all uh, citizens. Uh, so, if a government uh, will understand it, uh, due to uh, good um, reports uh, from uh, universities, uh, from scientists, uh, we can solve uh, this problem. That's my point. Thank you. Your uh, point, please. Okay, my point is, is supporting him, mm -hmm. but, but it's in a different light. What it means is that when, the, when taxes are collected from richer people, most, the truth is that the richer get rich, the rich get richer because um, the taxes are, might not be properly implemented. If, if you buy a car, if you buy a car, let me say, uh, of course, it's a rich person that has to buy a Lamborghini. If I buy a Lamborghini today and the tax on that Lamborghini is about 15, let me say, $150,000. 
You understand? A poor man won't buy a Lamborghini that would make him have a tax of $150,000. So he is taxed higher because he has a lot of more, he has more to buy and more to use. You understand? Now, those taxes will now be evenly distributed in, will now be evenly distributed in developing the poor communities. We have that in Africa where um, the problem in Africa is that, or my country, let me be specific, Nigeria, is that we don't tax the, the rich people but well enough to develop the whole country. So you have rich people flying around in Lamborghinis and Ferraris anyhow, and they, they, they have not even a single tax on them. You understand? So they're, they're not, okay. they, they keep... Okay, thank you. The okay. point is, is, okay, is clear to me. I just want to highlight three, actually, approaches that you already mentioned, the three of you, about, uh, about uh, uh, tackling the inequalities in health. One idea is to target the worse off. This means that give money only <laughs> to those who are at the lower social strata. So we take the money and we give them, we give projects, we do just for the poor. And the idea behind this is to improve their uh, education, their economic opportunities, their work, and then to improve their lifestyle. So this is one idea that is shown here, you see? We take all the money and give them. This is for the poor. And the other idea is to go and do close the gap. How we close the gap? We do the investment in by taking money from the richest and give it to the poorest, okay? This is another approach. The last one is very much uh, like what you said, that we need to increase, uh, to give the different taxes, okay, to different groups in society. Everyone has to pay according to his income. And uh, if everyone pays according to his income, so the poor will pay less and they get more, the other the groups will pay according to their income and this will be gradual, yes? And then this, the poorest group will pay almost nothing because they are not able to pay taxes. If they pay taxes, sometimes they pay it from the money, the necessary money for the basic things that they need, okay? People who are at the lower income, sometimes they pay money for taxes from their basic needs. So my question to you is now, what do you think about this? Which one has actually is the best that can be invested and um, implemented in the different countries? I didn't hear anything from that group in, that, in the last uh, um, row. Yeah. I'm gonna talk. Um, about the second one, where the people that has uh, low wage versus uh, higher wage, mm -hmm. I get that yeah, they pay more than the other ones, but it has to be parallel with improving education in order to start like making the gap smaller every time, because mm -hmm. while they start getting education, the low income people or kids, they get opportunities to maybe study when they start growing up, and then getting a better job, and then their kids a better job, and that's how the gap mm -hmm. might be. I know this is like a way long term speaking, mm -hmm. but I guess that's a good way of investment, if you yes. can say it that way. So you say that it, we should target the worst off. How many of you agree to target the worst off? I think they're all related in certain Yes, ways. of course. How many uh, support targeting the worst off? Okay, only you. And then closing the gap, how many support closing the gap? Uh, taking from the richest, giving to the poorest. Uh, okay, some of you. And how many actually are uh, supporting reducing the gradient? Some uh, don't agree with anything of the solutions. <laughs> Okay, so most of you are about reducing the gradient. And you know, many of the countries want to do this. They want actually to reduce the gradient by actually uh, introduces tax, introducing taxes to the different, according to different income of the populations. So this is uh, um, the, the most, because if we look at the other solutions, what happened? Here, if you give only the poorest and you forget about the others, so this might lead to those who are also at the lower uh, social hierarchy to become also poor. 
and they join the lower uh, hierarchy group, okay? Those will get rich and richest, right? And many will get maybe poorer, and if you leave them, their health will become also worse. So this is not the best solution for the long term in any society. But if you, and if you do this, you take from here and give him, and you forget about these groups again, maybe this group will get richer and you have here a big group of rich and maybe you will increase the gap because this group here will become very dependent on that group and their situation will not change at all. So if you give this a group, this is one of the things that you might do. But if you do this uh, last solution, maybe uh, everyone will, f will feel better because he is giving something and he getting also something. And there is no, go no change, uh, no a big uh, difference is going to be in the um, uh, different groups. It's good for the stability of the countries, it's good for the social cohesion, it's good for uh, also the investment um, in, in education and uh, the other opportunities because what you said costs money, cost money, costs governments lots of money and where have you can get this money? You can get this money from everyone, everyone is paying something that is according to his income and then you do a redistribution of this money by giving each group according to their needs. This is the idea uh, behind uh, this type of uh, taxes. Now, I'm going now directly to talk about Israel because I said that um, I'm going to give um, uh, some information about inequalities in health in Israel. If you have a question about what I talked until now, please, this is the time to ask. Okay, so in Israel, uh, um, like other countries, we have also inequalities in health. I'm going to present uh, some of uh, my work that uh, we did with other colleagues from uh, different universities uh, 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 about the inequalities in health between um, uh, Arabs and Jews in Israel. Uh, which is, which is the, uh, actually the main inequalities that we have. I think you know all this, the, the map and where Israel is located. The population of Israel is now about 8.5 million and Arabs in Israel are about 21% uh, of the population of, of Israel. Um, and uh, they are composed of three groups, Muslims and Druze and the Christians. And most Arabs live in the um, Galilee and northern areas. Some live in um, south and in, uh, in Haifa. In this study, we didn't include Arabs who live in Jerusalem because of political reasons. They are not included. So who are the Arabs in Israel? Uh, that this is a study is about in quality and health among them, between them and the Jewish. Arabs in Israel are a native born. A, uh, when is, um, they became a minority only after the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948. And they were under military administration until 66. So the economy of Israel was developing, but for the Arab population it was not developing because they were under the military occupation. And they were actually uh, developing an ethnic enclave market by that time that kept them uh, not uh, to survive, yes, at that time. And uh, Arabs also went under, uh, they went uh, many transitions in different aspects of life from 48 until now. They changed a lot because of the change of their economy. Why there was a change of the economy uh, among Arabs? Because um, many of the lands of the Arabs was confiscated by uh, the Israel governments. So they changed from agricultural societies to a, a, a semi-industrial society. And uh, many of them were displaced also to other villages or outside the border of Israel now. Many villages were destroyed. And their health must be also affected by the long-lasting conflict, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, because your topic is conflict. And it is important, conflict is important for health. We see that in different uh, studies that we already did. 
For the Jewish, the health of the Jewish is also affected by the First and the Second World War, and then also they immigrated to Israel, so immigration is important. Immigration is important for health. We, see, we saw that the immigrants' health is worse than the uh, original population, and also their health, the Jewish health, is also affected by the long-standing, also uh, long-lasting, uh, uh, Jewish-Palestinian-Israeli uh, uh, conflict. In Israel, we have now um, a health uh, in national health insurance law that actually, based on this law, everyone has the right to equal access to healthcare services um, in the country, and it is based on the principle of justice, of equality, and solidarity. However, what we see in Israel, it's, it has a high life expectancy, as you can see here. You see, it's one of the five highest um, life expectancy in the world, in Israel. It's much higher than the OECD. This is the OECD average, and Israel has here an average uh, uh, about 80 years uh, of life expectancy. However, if we look at the life expectancy, which was increasing for all groups in society, we see that the increase was different for different groups. And uh, for the Jewish, life expectancy increased much more than the Arabs. So we see here now, life expectancy for uh, Jewish men is more, four years more than the Arab men. And also for the women, we see it's about four years more life expectancy for Jewish women than Arab women. And what happens also, we see that life expectancy was actually that the gap in life expectancy is increasing with the years, starting from 94, when the law was actually established, the, enacted the public health insurance law, which is, you know, puts a question, big question mark. Why this ha could happen? when there is a national health insurance law enacted in 94, so the gaps in life expectancy and in health should be reduced. But what we see here that the opposite is happening. The life expectancy gaps are increasing. The same for infant mortality. Infant mortality in, in Israel is low, and for all the population, it's about a eight to 1,000, and uh, but what we see that there is um, a gap between the Arab and Jewish in life expectancy. You can see this here. This is the gap, and you see that the gap has increased. It was uh, life expectancy, uh, uh, sorry, infant mortality was two times higher among the Muslims in Israel. Now it's about three times higher. So uh, the same also for the cancer. What we see, the cancer is, uh, reduced in Israel for the Jewish population, but it is increasing for the Arab population. And the same for diabetes and other diseases. I can continue this, you know, and you can see that for the Arabs, in many health indicators, they have poorer health indicators compared to the Jewish population. Now, the question is why? Why this happens? Because I talked before about a national health insurance law that everyone is enjoying the same, should enjoy the same level of access to healthcare services. What we did, we tried to study this in the current study uh, and uh, try to understand that. But I want to give you some also, oh, something get wrong here, very wrong about this, but some information about, some context about Arabs compared to Jews in regarding the social determinants of health in Israel. This slide has to show the poverty line for Arabs and Jewish in Israel. So what we see is that for the Arab families, the poverty line is about, uh, for about 50% um, uh, of the families. So 50% of the families of the Arabs live under the poverty line, while for the Jewish, it's about only 14%. In um, education, we see that higher education for the, uh, the Jewish compared to the Arab population, the same for the income. They have, a uh, Jewish population have two times higher income compared to the Arab population. And this is consistent for many years already. 
The same when we look at employment. Unemployment rates are much higher for the Arabs compared to the Jewish. So we know already the context. So our study wanted to examine two things. Uh, one is what is the magnitude, how big is the inequalities in health between Arabs and Jewish, and what actually explains these inequalities. And we did the study for, uh, I won't, don't want to talk about the methods because this is something that um, you can look also into some of the papers uh, that uh, we published and also for the sake of the time about this. So our basic question was how ethnicity, Arab and Jews, is related to health and what can explain this? Is it about socioeconomic position, because you saw that there are differences in, uh, between Arabs and Jews in, uh, regarding income. Is it about uh, psychological factors, about stress and other things, or it is related to health behavior? Now, um, this is very important to question, because you know, if we know what are the factors that explain these inequalities, we can actually try to target these inequalities. Now, I want just to say one thing that, you know, what you see for the education and for the income and the unemployment is related to the policies. It's not that the Arab population are doing less because they don't want to be at that level of education. Because, you know, we have different, separate, different education system and uh, less work opportunities, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's why we see this uh, picture. So what we did, actually, we looked at the health, and you see that poor health was higher among the Arabs compared to the Jewish for the self-rated health and for the chronic diseases. And then what we did, we did different models that it's statistical models. I'm sorry that uh, maybe you don't know about it because this is for master level students, but I can explain it very clear. Here you see that poor health was almost two times higher for the Jewish, for the Arab compared to the Jewish. Poor health, okay? So what we did in the first model, we cleaned the factors of socioeconomic position. So when we take into consideration socioeconomic position, we see that Instead of two, the poor health became 1.1, so it was reduced. This means that socioeconomic position explained about 42%, because 1.9 was reduced to 1.1. And then 1.9 was reduced to 1.3 when we included here the um, psycho psychological factors. And then when we included only health behavior here, we see that 1.9 was reduced to 1.7. But when we included everything, what happened was very interesting. The odds ratio was reversed, means that if we take into consideration socioeconomic position, health behaviors, and community factors, the health of Arabs will be better. This means if we improve the socioeconomic position, the health behaviors of the Arabs in Israel, and their community factors and psychological factors, we can have better health. And this is something that we don't see very much in research, because, and this is very important result, that the association was reversed, that it was changed to the other side. This means that we explain totally the inequalities in health. We could explain it by these factors. So uh, we repeated this also for the chronic diseases, and we saw the same. And when we study the same models in the UK, we found the same thing. I mean, socioeconomic position and health behaviors explained most, most of the differences, and this is something that also we published in one of the journals of the academic. Uh. So to conclude, uh, actually, uh, my talk, First, to conclude this uh, study, so first that um, in Israel, reducing the ethnic inequalities in health can be achieved by reducing the socioeconomic position, uh, the gaps in socioeconomic position between the two populations, and also the health behaviors. Uh, and this needs actually uh, 
policies, right, to, 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 to change this uh, situation, to reduce this. And um, in, to conclude, uh, actually, my talk, I think this is a very positive uh, thing to, to, to finish uh, my talk, that if we know that these are the factors and we can actually work in, uh, to reduce it by uh, reducing uh, 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 this, uh, social, the, the social inequalities in health, then we can maybe achieve uh, the uh, more uh, equitable um, health uh, for everyone, uh, also in my country, but also in other, uh, in other countries. And thank you for your listening and, and for your participation, which was really great. I really congratulate you for this. Thank you. And uh, if you have any last questions, I can take it now. Uh, yes, please. You have a question? Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, I wanted to ask you about, um, about uh, what to do with the medical assistance. Because um, doctors, I think, like, Part of the quality of the health in a country has to do with the, the level of education doctors have, like the formation they have. Yes. You, you have countries in which um, maybe the hospitals have very, better infrastructure, but um, the doctors, for whichever reason, don't have um, good formation and they don't give like good health service. Um, and then, well, you have the fact that um, there are so many doctors living in Europe uh, willing to uh, move to the United States because of the salary. Because here they get paid very little. For example, in Russia, I think that's a problem because they have good doctors. Um, mm -hmm. Well, they have bad ones as well, but they have good doctors. But they are all willing to, to move because here they get paid, paid very little. And I think um, uh, we should find an equilibrium uh, between the salary they get paid because they make a very uh, big effort. I mean. Um, studying medicine is like is, is the worst degree. I think it's the hardest degree, and um, like having good uh, good doctors is really important. So, uh, how do we find that equilibrium? Because I mean, for having a free uh, health service, you cannot pay them like a lot, I guess, mm -hmm. and that's the difference between the United States and Europe. But how do we make? How, where do we find? find the point. I think this is a very important point um, and very important question about education of, um, of physicians and nurses and other health staff, medical staff. So, um, and um, uh, there is a, a research going on about, you know, this uh, is called the brain drain, what you pointed, you know, in Arab countries in poorer countries, we see that uh, people finish their medical education and they immigrate to other countries who can, uh, they can work and get better salaries. So uh, the quality of the medical services that people sometimes get in their countries is not at the same uh, level that, uh, but I can tell you that um, what we see now uh, is uh, in um, some spots in the world, like, like the US and other countries, they have this immigration, and there is an economic evaluation of, of this brain drain and the economic um, a, a, a evaluation of, of the physicians. Now, what happens, I think, in some of the countries that they try to give intensives to physicians to stay in the country and work in the country, in their country, and not just that, they give intensives to work in difficult places. Like uh, in Israel, for example, they give some intensive for people, for physicians to work in the periphery area. So uh, by that, they give them uh, some more uh, salary, uh, they give them sometimes housing. Uh, in Cuba, for example, they give the physicians housing, they can live in some village and work in the same village where they uh, get to the house. Uh, but, you know, Cuba is number one country that, can, that is uh, exporting physicians uh, to other countries. Uh, so this is an issue and it has to be resolved, but I think that intensives is the answer. Now, for some, you know, when I talk with some physicians uh, about it in, uh, you know, different uh, conferences around the globe, 
you see that some of them will say, okay, I will work outside my country, but I can benefit also my country from outside. How is that? Because I am in committees, I'm in conferences, I'm in places that can, I, I can affect higher decisions regarding, I'm in, the, I'm in the World Bank or some places that can have a big influence uh, regarding the country. So it's, um, I don't know what is the equilibrium here, what's the right portion, but it's an issue. Thank you for your question. Okay. Thank you.